it's Melissa Banbury. Today I want to share with you a sponging technique called the Northern Lights. It's a pretty simple technique once you break it all down into steps even though it looks more complicated. It's really not. Let's get started and I'll show you everything that you need to recreate this scene. So you're going to want to begin with just a piece of Whisper White cardstock. I've cut this one using the floral frame framelits from Stampin' Up. So the first thing that you're going to need is um, Daffodil Delight ink and you're going to want to sponge for each color as we go. So all you're going to want to do is load up your sponge and we're going to work in kind of um, a really random rubbing motion across the cardstock there's no real technique other than be random if that makes any sense at all so we're just going to start laying down the color and I rub the color into the cardstock I don't use a tapping motion I really rub it in there so that I can get the best out of my color so I'm just going to do a couple random lines across my cardstock it can be darker in areas lighter in others there's really doesn't matter We'll just put that Daffodil Delight down in a few spots, just like that. The next color that you're going to want to apply is Old Olive. Same thing, just load up your sponge. And you're going to want to follow a little bit of the line that you just created with the Daffodil Delight. So I'm just going to go below. And same motion, just kind of rub that color in and it's okay to start blending those two colors together. But for right now as a guideline, I like to kind of follow the lines that I've made with that first color. Okay. And you don't want to cover that first color up. It's okay to blend them, but you don't want it to disappear. There you go, you have your old olive. Then you want to go in with Tempting Turquoise. So we'll load that sponge up. And by the time you get to Tempting Turquoise, you want to start filling in a little bit more of that white space that you see that's remaining, but you don't want to cover it completely because we have one more color that we're going to do that with. So we'll kind of do the same thing. I'm going to kind of go a little bit off course this time and I'm going to fill in a little bit more of that white space kind of make a few loops and a few passes and kind of blend some of the colors together and you'll see that as you blend them the yellow of the Daffodil Delight and the Tempting Turquoise kind of makes a different green of its own it'll all help add dimension and a more realistic look in the end Okay, so there's the Tempting Turquoise. Now we're going to use the Rich Razzleberry. And because this is the final color before we get into the deep sky colors, we're going to want to fill in whatever remains of that white space. And then plus you want to do a little bit of meandering across the paper. just going to fill that in. There's a little bit there and I'm just going to carry that color downward. You'll never get the same result twice with this technique which is kind of the uniqueness and and I think what adds the most character to this technique is that no one's results will look the same. Not only from person to person from but from individual project to project you will never get it to look the same twice. Okay, so I've gone ahead and I've added that rich razzleberry. And again, you want to make areas darker. You want to make some lighter. You just want to vary, have a little variation in the colors. So there you'll see that. It looks like a mess, doesn't it? But don't worry. We're going to start filling in the sky and it's all going to come together. So for the next color we're going to use is Night of Navy. Midnight Muse would also work for this really well. So we're going to go ahead again, we're going to load up that sponge, and now we're going to start to define the lights. So this color is really kind of makes or breaks how your lights are going to look. This is where you get to pick kind of the shape 
that they take. So I'm just going to start laying that color down. And I'm going to be pretty random with it, but at the same time I'm going to kind of highlight how I want the lights to look as they're kind of dancing in the sky. So really rub that color in. Leave some of those areas exposed. Blend as best you can. Don't take a lot of time with it. I know that I kind of get stuck on this step because this is where I go, oh, well maybe that light should have you know, I should add a little tail down there, or maybe I should kind of blend that out more. Don't don't overthink it because it's really it's not a perfect technique. And like I said, you'll never get the same look twice. So there I've laid down the Knight of Navy. I'm gonna add a little bit more down here. There's me being nitpicky. Okay. So we are ready now for basic black. should also mention, you're never ever going to have clean fingers after this technique. It just won't happen. And that's good. Dirty's good. Okay, so we're going to grab the basic black sponge. And you're going to go over that night of navy. You're going to leave some of it exposed. But you really want to cover most of it up because you want that sky to look pretty dark. So here you might want to, you might end up doing a couple coats. But you don't want to rub that existing color off, which can sometimes happen when you start layering dark colors like this. It sometimes wants to wipe away what you've already put underneath, so you kind of got to be a little bit careful of that. But you're just basically highlighting what you've laid down with that night of, night of navy. Okay. Really rub that in there. Maybe I'll close this section off. I want it to look like it's not dancing so so perfect. There we go. Okay. You can see this looks really, really bright versus some of these areas in here that looks really dark, and that's perfectly fine because that's if you've ever seen the northern lights, that's really how they look. They are really bright in spots as they move and dance and then they get really dark in other spots where they're just blacker than more color. So there you go, there you have that part. So the next thing that you want to do is um, stamp your image and for this particular design I have decided to go with these little birds in the tree and this is out of the Serene Silhouette stamp set from Stampin' Up! But if you have a stamp set say Lovely as a Tree from Stampin' Up! and you want to do it along the baseline or where your your grass line or your ground line might be, you're going to keep wanting to go on with that basic black and you're going to want to make that shadow and grass line and make it completely black at the bottom so that you can stamp your your images over top. But for this instance it's all going to be sky so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to ink up this stamp really well with basic black and you want to choose a silhouette image if you choose something that is an open image, you're going to end up having to take a marker and color it in because it just won't look right. It'll just look a little bit off if you do it that way. So I'm going to go ahead now and I'm going to stamp this slightly off the cardstock. And there you go, there you have it. The little bird's in the tree just off in the corner. And it just kind of finishes it off and really brings the image into focus, but really the showstopper is the sponging technique in the back background. That Northern Lights technique is really, really stunning and really pretty. So I'll show you the finished card that I've made one more time. And you'll notice how different they are. You will never achieve the same look twice. So that's all there is to it. I hope that you enjoyed this and I hope you'll give it a try. Can't wait to see what everyone comes up with. Thanks so much for watching. The other thing that I forgot to mention when I was going through my tutorial was to add a few stars in the background when you're completed your entire project just with using a white gel pen. It really helps to just define the sky and just add a few stars makes it look a little more realistic. 
So that's as simple as just using your white gel pen and you just want to get the ink flowing and go ahead and just do a few random dots of stars in the sky. That's all there is to it. There you go. Thanks.